I was able to keep track of every, not every single, all but one of the pizza boxes from this video, and I'm very proud of myself. Hi, my name is Rebecca, aka Vegan Bodega Cat. It, what? That didn't sound right, but I think I said the right words. Whatever. So for a whole month, I tried every single vegan pizza I was able to get my hands on. Like the frozen pre-made kind that you pop in the oven. And I was able to get my hands on seven, which I think is a pretty good number. The box I lost was the Sweet Earth one. I left it at my parents' house on accident. So over the course of this video, we're gonna try the Sweet Earth pizza. We're gonna try Alpha Foods, Blackbirds, Pizza OG, Aji, I don't know, Amy's. American flatbread and Daya. Daya. I think it's Daya. I tried my best to only get plain pizzas. Like, I wanted every pizza to be on a level playing field. So, when possible, I just got like plain cheese pizza. However, some brands just didn't make plain cheese pizza. Like, all of them came with toppings. So, in that case, I would try to get the plain nest version. And then sometimes I just couldn't find the plain version. Um, so, I mostly tried plain pizzas here with a few unplain ones mixed in. So if you've been curious if there's any good vegan pizzas out there to try, at least frozen ones, then stick around and let's get started. All right, so here is our first pizza of this series. It's been a busy day today and I'm going to have a dinner of this Daya deliciously dairy-free thin crust gluten-free pizza. I don't know if all of their pizzas are gluten-free, but all of the pizzas that they had that they were diet at Whole Foods were gluten-free. And I'm gonna try my best to only get plain for all of the different brands. This way it's consistent across the board. So the plain, uh, one for Daya was just called Cheese Lovers with mozzarella and cheddar style shreds. There's supposedly three servings in this pizza. I cut it into four because it just makes sense to cut a pizza into four pieces and try not to drop it. But this is what it ended up looking like. I baked it in the oven for 22 minutes as directed and we're gonna give it a taste test. It's steaming. <gasps> I almost dropped it. It's giving me major pizza bagel vibes, especially with the gluten-free crust. Now, I like a crunchy, thin crust, so um, the, the thin, crunchy crust is fine. It does taste a little bit like gluten-free e, um, which I, I don't really like, but it's not bad. It's very hard to rate this because I haven't eaten much frozen vegan pizza in my day yet. But I want to give it like a seven and a half. Like it's decently edible. And I'll probably eat half this pizza. Ooh, hot. But I'm not exactly like, wow. It was like 9.50, which I don't know. That seems expensive. But then again, I bought like three frozen pizzas at Whole Foods while I was there. And they were all like the same price. So maybe that's normal for a frozen vegan pizza. Seven and a half out of 10. Hey guys, so yes, I am recording on my floor. Um, I decided that it's time to review another pizza. Today's pizza is labeled as a flatbread. It's a pizza that I have not tried before uh, from a brand I've never even heard of. It's called American Flatbread. Handmade, wood-fired, thin and crispy pizza. Rich and satisfying vegan harvest. Now, um, I am excited for this one. Um, because the serving size is half a pizza. All the pizzas that I've seen so far, the serving size was either a third of a pizza or a quarter of a pizza, but this serving size is half a pizza. And for half a pizza, it's like 260 calories, which means that like really, a serving size is like a whole pizza, which makes me really excited that I can eat a whole pizza, okay? Uh, it looks like the cheese is made out of tapioca starch, coconut oil. Oh, I do see coconut oil, so hopefully it doesn't taste like coconut. I'm not a fan of coconutty cheeses. But yeah, I don't have much to say other than it smells pretty good. I thought something was really weird um, when they, when I was reading the instructions for cooking it, they recommended you either thaw it for 15 to 30 minutes 
minutes or put it in the microwave for 45 seconds. I was lazy and I did the microwave route and then you only have to bake it for five to eight minutes, which honestly, like, I kind of like that because then the baking time is shortened. Anyway, it is definitely a flatbread with a crispy crust. Let me show you. There you go, definitely a thin crust type pizza. I also may have baked it a little bit longer than necessary, but I'm a fan of the crusty crust, so I, I think that's not gonna be a problem for me. It smells very good, so I, my hopes are really high. Here's another up close, you know, the typical half melted vegan cheese thing. Cheers. I like it. Definitely has a crunchy crust, but I like thin crust, so it's all good. It's not extremely cheesy, and the crust is a tad bit chewier than I would like. But, I actually really like this. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. I like it, and I would buy it again. Hey y'all, today's pizza review is Amy's Vegan Margarita. And honestly, when I first told people on Instagram I was doing this uh, pizza taste test video, so many people said this was their favorite. But now that I made it, it does not look as good as like the flatbread I had last time. Um, but I'm, I'm down to be corrected. It claims that all of their wheat flour pizzas are made by hand and it simply tastes better because of it. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, margarita. Hand stretched wheat crust, dairy free, non GMO. Let's give it a try. Here's how the pizza looks like. It looks a little more oily and less cheesy than what I would like. Like, it's, it, it's not a lot of cheese on there. I don't see a lot of cheese. I see a little bit of cheese, but not a lot of cheese. But you know what? You don't need cheese for flavor, so maybe it tastes good though. The crust is good, but that's the only part that's really going for it. Mm -hmm. You know what? Okay, no, hey back. It tastes the most like a regular New York City slice of pizza out of all the pizzas I've had so far. Like the tomato sauce and the bread is the most authentic. But the cheese is like flavorless. Like there's almost no cheese. So while it tastes pretty good, I'm like, mm, I'm like, mm. It's like the perfect amount of crunchy and fluffy. I want Birdo's opinion before I rate this one. Eight. Around, around there. Around there. Okay, good. I was going to give it an eight. I was wondering if an eight is too high, considering the lack of cheese. But the flavor is really good, so... Yeah, I like the not burntness, but charcoal. Yeah, the charcoal bottom is very crispy. It reminds me of uh, two boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it needs cheese. Yeah. Eight, and then if it would have had cheese, it would it would be very high. Yeah. Yeah, that's all, bye. Hello, we're back with another pizza review. We are slightly intoxicated, but we're gonna try not to get that in the way of our rating system. Let me show you which pizza we will be reviewing today. Today we have Blackbird's uh, hand-tossed pizza. I couldn't get my hands on a plain flavor. You know, I'm trying to get the planes. Um, but instead, I just got kale and mushroom. I had the choice between a barbecue chicken, a kale mushroom, and a supreme. And I figured that kale mushroom is the closest to plain that we can get. You know what I mean? So, that's why I chose this flavor. Now, the crust is the fattest that I've seen so far. Um, it looks good. We have a slice right here. Right here, right here. Three servings per container, 340 calories each. I'm about to eat half this pizza because I'm sharing it with my boyfriend. Hmm. Well, I basically just ate all the kale off, so now we have a plain pizza, but. The crust is great. This is the best crust I've had so far. Oh yeah, this crust tastes fresh baked. The sauce is decent. The cheese doesn't have that much flavor. Yeah, kind of bland cheese. Mmm, but that crust, I'm having trouble rating it because the crust is like 10 out of 10. The crust is so good. But you can't just rate pizza on the crust, you know? 
Oh, but the crust is so good. Let's give it an eight. And the crust is what saves it. The crust is like amazing crust. We're back with another pizza review. And this time, it's one I've really never even seen before. And that is the Alpha Pizza. Now, if you watched my chicken nugget review, you know that Alpha was the, one of the top two vegan chicken nuggets that I tried. So I have high hopes for this. Um, I've had Alpha's breakfast burritos, and those are absolutely delicious. Like, literally so good. Make them in an air fryer. This way the outside tortilla gets crispy, and it is amazing. Anyway, so this is also the first personal pizza that I've reviewed. Like, it's literally, like, so small. Like, it's made for one serving. Ta-da! There it is. I don't know if you can tell, but it's about the size of my hand. The cheese looks whack, not gonna lie. The cheese looks... Weird, as you can see. But we all know that vegan cheese is not the best thing vegans have going for them, so we'll let it pass, I guess. If it tastes good, that's all that matters. Um, what made this pizza interesting was that the instructions said to microwave it for two and a half minutes and then bake it for five minutes. I like that because it means that my pizza would be done super fast versus baking it for like 20 minutes or something. Uh, palm oil free, meat free, dairy free, certified vegan. Yum, yum, yum. Unrivaled taste. I will decide that. It has a tang like yogurt. I'm not sure I appreciate that. I don't know if it's the tomato sauce, the bread, or the cheese. Yeah, I can't tell, but that tang it's just not a flavor I usually go for in pizza, so that first bite really threw me off. That's weird, bro. The very edge of the crust is crunchy. I like that. The rest of the crust is not so crunchy, but it's fine. It's like a decent texture. Um, but why the tang? That tang needs to go. For those reasons, I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. I'll eat it. I wouldn't buy it again. Sorry, Alpha. I still love your nuggets and your breakfast burritos. Hello, wow, that's really zoomed in. Ooh, okay, that's fine. So the pizza is Sweet Earth. As I said before, I was gonna try to get the plainest of each pizza. Like I was aiming for just a cheese pizza to review, but Sweet Earth doesn't have a plain pizza. This is the plainest pizza they have. It has veggies on it, broccoli, mushrooms, Brussels sprouts, cherry tomatoes, and more with zesty marinara and vegan cauliflower herb sauce. Now, my main complaint is where's the cheese? This slice has the most cheese. You know, this has like a kind of acceptable amount of cheese, but this slice, for example, has this much cheese and then that piece. This slice has two pieces here and two pieces there. And this slice has that little chunk, these three little half shreds, and that one long shred. They chose to put Brussels sprouts on pizza. It just would have not been my first choice. Um, I generally like veggies on pizza, but Brussels sprouts? It's odd. I don't know about this one, guys. To give them a fair shot, I'm picking up the cheesiest slice, which isn't that cheesy. Mmm. I got a Brussels sprout. The dough is chewy. Oh, the Brussels sprout is a bad idea. No Brussels sprout on pizza for me. No, no. I'm gonna try another bite without Brussels sprout. The very edge, edge, edge of the crust is crispy, but the rest of the bread is doughy, even though I baked it for like five minutes longer than the recommended time because it just didn't look done. And the lack of cheese very noticeable. It tastes like you, you took pita bread and then you just put some tomato sauce on it from the store and then some veggies that were gonna go bad soon so you wanted to cook them on something. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, five out of ten, four and a half out of ten. Would not recommend. Wait, let me say one positive thing about the pizza. There's like this seasoning. You see that seasoning on top? Whenever you get like a pocket of that seasoning, it's pretty good. I like the seasoning itself, not the pizza. It doesn't save the pizza, I just wanted to say one nice thing about it. So, that's cool about the pizza, that they have seasoning on top in some parts. 
good morning grand rising as the hippies like to say this morning we're doing something not very hippie and we're having pizza for breakfast i have no idea how to pronounce this brand but we're having og foods og foods og or og that's the only thing i like those are the only two options i can think of um i obviously wanted to get like a regular plain marinara pizza or whatever but the most plain pizza they had was not very plain it is the plant-based Sicilian Beyond Sausage Italian Crumbs on a Cauliflower Crust. Oh, it's gluten-free and GMO-free, all that stuff. So I cooked the pizza, we're gonna cut the pizza, and then we're gonna taste test the pizza. Here it is, I feel like it looks pretty good. This clump of cheese didn't melt as much, but like this really melted, so I don't know what's up with that. The crust looks decent, I, I cooked it till it was like crispy and stuff. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna like it because like why cauliflower crust? Like why not flour? But we're gonna cut it up and and give it a go. Yo, when I tried to cut the crust, it squeaked up. Listen. Why do that? Why? That's really weird. For those of you who eat cauliflower crust, how normal is a squeaky crust? Like, that's odd. Anyway. Ah, hot. Mm. I don't know. It's not bad. I could taste the cauliflower, but not in a bad way. Like, if I needed to eat gluten-free, I would eat those. The cheese is good. Tastes a little bit like American cheese. Like the white sliced American cheese, you know? Which is like, not typical, but also not bad. I'll give it a seven and a half. But I did expect a higher rating since it got the added benefit of having like faux meat on it. I have two more notes. The crust is crunchy, which I like. I like a crunchy crust. But I don't know if it's the cauliflower crust or something else. I think it's the cauliflower crust, but there is a slightly bitter aftertaste that I'm not a fan of. So. As you can tell, there were some hits and some misses. There were some pretty intense misses, honestly. I have my list over here, and we're gonna start from the least to best pizza of the month. In summary, in seventh place, we have the pizza box that I don't currently have. That was so bad. It was so bad. Thinking back, I think I was generous with my rating of 4.5. So in seventh place, 4.5 Sweet Earth Pizza. Please don't do that to yourself. In sixth place, we have Alpha. Alpha, where are you? Alpha! Mmm, here you go. Now, I was surprised about this because Alpha Foods consistently hits the nail on the head. They have great breakfast burritos and their chicken nuggets won my last, like, month of chicken nugget video so this pizza not being great was very surprising to me but it was like strangely sour i don't want sour pizza in fifth place we have og og pizza i think during my clip i gave this a 7.5 but i'm gonna take it down a notch to a seven um because it was like the bitterness was just not great and yeah it just didn't deserve the 0.5 i took the 0.5 away i was actually pretty surprised at this one um even though it had a cauliflower crust so i like my my hopes weren't that high but i thought it'd be good because it had like beyond meat on it because usually like like uh like faux meats make vegan food taste better but in this case it, did, it could not save it from the bitterness of the cauliflower crust so uh og og comes in fifth place in fourth place we have daya daya a tried and true this is a classic daya is like the og in so many vegan fields so many cheeses you know uh so many instant food things and it was decent right 7.5 solid i would buy it i would eat it i would not write home about it but you know solid fourth place decent pizza now third and second place is a tie does that make everything skip back one i don't know the next place is a tie the next place is a tie which means that the last place should have been number six and not number seven. Whatever, you guys are getting it. You guys are getting the flow. Anyway, in second slash third place, which are the same place, we have a tie. We have two pizzas that got an eight from me. Solid, decent frozen pizza options. We have uh, Blackbirds. They've been doing pizza for years at this point, but like not usually frozen. Like they usually have a like location where they sell pizza. 
Um, and then another classic, another classic Amy's. Uh, these two could not be more different. Like they were really different, but they were both pretty solid. Amy, if you would just had more cheese on there, it probably would have won, but there just was not a lot of cheese on this thing. The crust on this is what gave it an 8, really. The crust is like fantastic, best crust of the entire season. <laughs> um, but they're both like the same goodness, even though they both got there two very different ways. Both solid pizzas. I'd enjoy both of them. If I was craving more of a classic pizza, I'd probably go with Amy's. So maybe I'll give Amy like a slight advantage over blackbirds like if i had to like choose between the two of these i'd pick this one but they're both decent and in first place and i feel weird giving this one first place because it's like not as pizza-y as it could be because it's a flatbread but i put it in the pizza category and it won which makes me feel like does it really deserve to win i don't know but this is the most enjoyable thing i ate this month and that is the flatbread like this is the one i'm gonna buy like this is when I crave pizza, when I crave something like, you know, to toss in the oven and like eat the entire thing myself, like this is what I'm going to buy. So it does deserve first place. You know what I mean? I don't know. So this is delicious. Um, I like this one a lot. Uh, I like the crust was crunchy. The cheese was good. Just decent, you know, solid. Winner. Oh, oh, and it got a 9 out of 10. Anyway, so that's my... That's my thing, my, my roundup of all the vegan frozen pizzas that I could find. The only brand that was recommended that I tried that I could not find was one named Chloe's. I've never even heard of it. Even when I tried to look it up, like I couldn't find it. But I, did a, I think I did a really good job hunting down the rest of them. That is all I have for today. Let me know what area of food should I attack next. I'm thinking cream cheese. Vegan cheese is a very odd corner of the market for me. I'm not generally a fan of vegan cheese. I just think it's generally lacking. But cream cheese I could start to kind of like dabble in. I don't know. It's either cream cheese or like veggie burgers. Honestly, I'm intimidated by the sheer amount of veggie burgers that exist and that's why I haven't touched it yet. Anyway, that is all I have for today. Uh, let me know if you agree with my ratings. Let me know if I wildly misrated your favorite pizza or something like that uh like if you like subscribe if you want to subscribe if you want to follow me on instagram where i post every single day of my instagram right here and that is all i have today i will talk to you next time goodbye shout out to all my patrons but especially my bodega bosses and my og bodega babes Jessica, Christina, Marlene, Lucia, Alex Crates, Ellen, Michelle, Laura, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex, the Planet Earth, Nicole, Jenny, Gemini, Janine, Curtis, Stacy, Michelle, Eduardo, Chloe, Erica, Dana, Vanessa, Nakia, Angie, Matt, Jasmine, and Mariana. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support. If you want to support me non-monetarily, then just subscribe and stick around to watch another video. It shows YouTube that you like my content.